crafting on the go again. We're camping. So we're in the eastern Sierras and this is our view. Not bad. And I think I've got all the supplies I need for quite a few cards here. I've got my trimmer, of course. I have three stamp sets. And I have my palette knives. And I've got my embossing paste. This is my basic toolkit. This holds some blocks as well as some fun foam that I can also use for a stamping pad. And this has quite a few pieces of cardstock. I picked seven colors of cardstock. Each of these has a card base or two and then some basic layers inside. Plus I have Whisper White. I have a little bit more Whisper White than everything else. Then I also brought uh, some quarter sheets of glossy paper. I have a spare fast fuse refill, those same colors of stamp pads, plus basic gray. A stamp and pierce mat, cut down smaller to fit in my box better. An aqua painter, a punch, one spool of ribbon, dazzling diamonds glitter, and there's that embossing paste set up. When I tip that photo box up, I can stack my stamp pads and my paper. And there's my tool kit and my stamp and pierce mat. There's my calendar with my cards that I need for this month. I think that you can see that you don't really need a ton of supplies to have a lot of variety. This was all just in that one box plus my trimmer, which is not just which is just a tiny bit bigger than my photo boxes. One of the benefits of having few supplies is that it kind of actually helps you be creative with what you have. I thought I would start with Jar of Love and I'm kind of wishing that I had brought some blue for water, but I didn't. But I have a card base with wild wasabi for an a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. And I'm going to make one of those stand-up cards, that easel cards. So I'm going to score at two and three quarters. So that I can make one of those cards like so. My layers will be so saffron. This is five and a quarter by four. So I'm going to cut down some smoky slate to three and three quarters. by five. And that gives me just a little bit of an edge. The one tool that I really miss when I'm traveling is my Big Shot. You know, Big Shot you can travel with. It's not that huge and I have traveled with it before. But I didn't bring it for this camping trip. So I'm going to layer my So Saffron just on this bottom half. And I'm going to kind of pl place it where I want it so I don't go beyond where I want the adhesive. And then I'm going to wait to adhere the smoky slate for a little bit until I decide what I'm going to do with my card. I'm going to stamp the jar in wild wasabi. This is the largest of the jars. And I'm going to be cutting this out. No, I think I want to stamp it here just in case I decide not to cut it out. And I'm going to stamp a stem. And I'm going to flip that over and stamp another stamp. And I want to stamp a couple of flowers a little bit higher. I'm going to be masking this. So I'm going to just stamp one of those flowers on a sticky note and pull off about three pieces of sticky note and cut that out. So I'll just put those sticky notes over these flowers. And stamp another flower behind those. 
that didn't get very close, so I'm just going to use my aqua painter to fill in just a little bit there and take these off for a little bit. Save these to reuse. And I'm going to stamp this other background, this other layer of these flowers. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure this actually is another layer of these flowers, but I think I'm going to use it that way. And then cover up these flowers again so I can stamp the stems. So with all three flowers, I can map I can stamp these ferny stems behind. And if I had blue, I could fill this in. I think what I'll do is just use a little bit of smoky slate and my blend and my aqua painter and just kind of hint at some water in here. Remove the masks, and I think I will cut this out, and it is fussy cutting. I don't have my Big Shot. This does have a die, but if I leave a little bit of white around it, it will not be too hard to cut out. This style of card needs a stopper so that when you fold it up, it holds it here. So I'm going to stamp these flowers, these smaller flowers. I have both stamps on the same block. So hopefully I can see through enough. And that's not very good, but it'll be good enough, I think. So I, I did cut a couple of masks for these flowers as well. When you cut a mask, you want to try cutting it a little bit smaller. I'll be cutting off most of this fern, so I just want a little bit behind. And remove these masks. and cut out these flowers. I think I'm going to use that strip of the designer series paper right across here. Trying hard not to get adhesive on my stamp and pierce mat. Just trim that off. I could use my trimmer. Snips are quick. Adhere this to my so saffron layer. Oops. Ah, before I adhere that, I want to tie a ribbon on here. So let me bring in this mat. It's not a silicone mat, but I think it'll sort of do. I'm going to tie a bow around here. And of course, my third hand. 
one of my essential tools. Let's see if I can fluff this ribbon a little bit. From here, yes, good. So I'll get that to where I want it and adhere this to my so saffron. And this with dimensionals. I like it. And let's see, do I have room for, oh, I do not. So I'm just going to put my white on the inside. I need a layer of white. Decide how far, decide where I want these flowers, and I need to put these on with dimensionals. And then I can stamp here my greeting to a wonderful friend. Enjoy your special day. And there's my card. I actually like it. It almost feels like it needs a little something here. Maybe if I can mask off this background here. Maybe I'll just add a little spritzers. Maybe I'll just add a few spritzes of green here. A little bit more. I like it. If you would like the directions for this card, come on over to BevAdams.com and I'll, when I get home I will have written all the directions and have them available for you. Thanks for stopping by. Talk to you soon. Bye.